Do not assume that when you go in for your pap that your doctor is running an HPV test because the chances are that they're actually not running an HPV test. So when you go in for a pap, typically what's done is the pap is done, which is looking at cells. It's called cytology. So there's the pap portion of a test where you're looking at the cells. That's how you can determine whether there's anything that looks like dysplasia or precancer. But the HPV test is a separate test. And if, especially if you're under the age of 30, it's probably not going to be done unless your pap is abnormal. If you're over the age of 30, it's probably a little bit more likely that you're gonna have both tests done, both the PAP as well as the HPV test. In other words, you're gonna have something called co-testing, and co-testing is what's recommended for women over the age of 30. However, it's not often done. In fact, it's not even done when it should be done. In other words, with somebody who actually has an abnormal PAP and has a history of having um, HPV and dysplasia. Actually, what prompted me to do this video was um, I was done treating a woman from Las Vegas. So she's in her late 30s. I think she had moderate dysplasia and um, HPV. So we did escarotic treatment, finished up. Everything looked good at that point. Most of the time when women are either driving from a far distance or they're flying in from somewhere else, which is a lot of a lot of the women that I'm seeing, I'll just have them do their pap and testing back with their 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 doctor wherever they're from, just because there's no point in in traveling or flying and incurring some additional cost just to do just to do a pap and an HPV test. But after doing this for 25 years, I know that a lot of the time when it should be tested, HPV that is, a lot of the time when HPV should be tested like say as a follow-up where you already know you have an abnormality, it's in fact not often done. So what I said to this woman from Las Vegas when we were all done and I said, well, it's time to do testing. Let's you know see if, if there's any dysplasia and, and if the, dis the H HPV is gone. And I said, make sure you look your doctor in the eye and say, please run an HPV test, right? You think you wouldn't have to ask your doctor this. So she went to her gynecologist in Las Vegas, said, make sure please run an HPV test. The doctor said, yeah, 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 of course I'll run an HPV test. Now, mind you, she has dysplasia. The last test she did said moderate dysplasia, high risk HPV, this is a, and late 30s. This is exactly the sort of person where you automatically should be doing HPV testing. So anyway, you know, maybe a couple weeks um, after her test, she calls me up and says, good news, my pap's normal, everything's gone, everything's good. And I said, knowing this, I said, did they run the HPV test? They said they ran it and it's negative. Okay, well, that's, that's good. I'm like, but again, after 25 years, knowing that what they say and what they do sometimes are two different things, I said, well, just can you check again and make sure that they did your HPV test? So she called them up again. Actually, she went to the office and a second staff member said, yes, we ran it and it's um, positive. So in other words, the HPV is not gone. So I thought, okay, well, if they said they ran it. They said it's positive. They must have run it. So I almost said, okay, well, that's okay. That's fine. But I said, you know what? Can you get the actual PAP result, the actual report from the lab and send it to me? So she sent it to me. Long and the short of it is they did not do the HPV test. So the first nurse or staff member in that gynecologist's office said, yes, we ran it. It's negative. The second one said, yes, we ran it. It's positive. And then I'm looking at her actual report where they never ran it at all. So now she went to the office, confronted them and said, you know, why? And at first they denied it. They said, well, yeah, we ran it, we ran it, we ran it. Then when they saw and couldn't, and couldn't wheeze a lot of it that they actually didn't run it after they said they were going to run it, they said, well, what's the point in running it? You can never get rid of it. Okay, which is just nonsense, complete malarkey. And, um, you know, she was practically in tears because she was going back and forth 
in the office in front of other patients feeling just humiliated after i after the after this incident i talked to her on the phone she was in tears I mean, she was crying because they didn't want to run the test so even after she called them out on it um, they tried to excuse it say that well what's the point of running it um, you know if there's no point in running it why even have the test available what an idiotic thing to say just idiotic and then the staff member from this office said well because i said they can still run it because they keep the liquid sample in the lab usually for a few weeks so you can run additional tests off the sample so you don't need to go even go back into the office they can just call the lab up and say hey can you add on an hpv test but they didn't want to do it and then they lied and said well, it, it could be as much as $1,800 extra and your insurance isn't going to cover it and all this other nonsense. It's like an $85 test, you know, running an HPV test. It's cheap. It's not $1,800. So they just continued to feed her this nonsense. Um, she got so frustrated finally to the point where um, I just suggested that maybe she just want to, if they won't run it, just go to a different doctor's office. And that's exactly what she had to do. She had to go to another doctor to have a test done that should have been run in the first place. Um, in her case, you know, it turned out that we had confirmatory, you know, confirmation on the pap that it was in fact normal and there was no dysplasia and then her HPV test was actually negative. So it was good. So after doing treatment, it cleared. So you have to wonder, you know, why, why would they do that? Why is that um, such a common thing and why am I pointing it out? I guess a couple things. One is, if don't assume that you've been tested. I talk to women probably every other day where they have this sort of timeline where they think, oh, back five years ago, I didn't have HPV. And then two years ago, it showed positive. And what they're doing is they're assuming that they didn't have it when in fact they weren't tested five years ago because their paps were normal. So they were never actually tested. And then they make the assumption that when they f get the positive test back, well, that's their first positive test. Therefore, they must have just gotten HPV. And how could they have HPV? Um, you know, and then they start trying to figure out where the HPV came from and, you know, um, start wondering whether, you know, it can bring up all sorts of issues and relationships and all sorts of things like that. But. Um, the fact of the matter is, unless you actually have the report in hand and see the actual result of the HPV test, either positive or negative, they probably they didn't run it. And what they typically do is something called a reflex test. So what a reflex is, is um, in the event that the pap is normal, um, the HPV is just not run. And in the event that the pap has ascus or atypical squamous cells or has usually it'll be run with ascus, but it can be run with just any abnormality to a reflex. So in other words, if the pap comes back abnormal, well then they'll run the HPV test because you want this information. Because paps are not perfect. The more information you have, um, generally the more equipped you are to make a decision about what you should do and whether you should have a colposcopic exam or biopsy and things like that. So if your pap is showing something like ascus, that may be nothing. Um, ASCUS is an acronym for atypical squamous cells of undetermined significance and that could be nothing, could be just wrong, could be inflammation, could be um, dysplasia, could even be severe dysplasia. Having the HPV test helps because if you're HPV negative with ASCUS, there's probably nothing there and you probably don't need to do any colposcopic exam. Um, but if you have ASCUS or some other abnormality and you're HPV positive, there's a better chance that there's probably, there could be something there and it might be worth your time to do a colposcopic exam and possible biopsies. So as I said um, previously, under the age of 30, you're not normally going to have HPV tested except as a reflex test in the event that the pap is abnormal and then you'll be tested for HPV. Um, so again, just make sure that when you go in for your pap, if you want to know your HPV status, Tell them not to reflex test it, but run it as a separate independent test. In other words, do co-testing, do both the PAP and the HPV test. Now, some doctors are going to give you a hard time and tell you all sorts of BS. 
Like what's, you know, you can't get rid of it. You know, doctors are real funny about this because especially if you're younger, say if you're in your 20s and you're, you're HPV positive or you get an abnormal pap, if it's mild, um, the dysplasia, they'll, the standard of care is to do nothing. So they'll say, don't worry about it. Uh, it'll go away by itself. Um, you know, we'll just recheck it in, in a year and it should go away by itself. So in, in the beginning, initially, doctors typically say, don't worry about it, it'll go away. But then after you start having problems with it, like maybe when you start having moderate or severe dysplasia, then suddenly it's, you can never get rid of it. And you can't have it both ways. That's just ridiculous. Of course you can get rid of it. That's not to say that um, there aren't people who struggle clearing HPV because there absolutely are. I mean, it can be challenging to get rid of. And there probably are some cases where um, it lingers, where it looks like it might be gone. And in other words, it might show negative and then it might show positive at a later date. That's what some people would refer to as being, you know, this idea of being dormant. Dormancy probably does exist. And I think I'll do another video just on, on, on ideas of clearing HPV and some of the data on that. I don't think it happens often, the idea where it's dormant. If any virus, if it's not replicating, the viral load can be so low um, that the test is negative and there's actually still an infection. I don't think that happens a lot with HPV. I've treated this for 25 years and um, overwhelmingly when, especially subsequent to treatment, when HPV is showing negative, it's it seems as though it's quite unusual for it to show positive again unless there's reason you know to suspect that you've been infected with a new strain because that could always happen but what it looks like based on all the data we have at hand and research is that um, you know women who clear HPV they have an immune response and that should um, confer permanent immunity to whatever strain it is now what can you do in the event that your doctor's being a jerk and doesn't want to do your HPV test do it yourself um, I put, I have a link in the video description below where you can do home testing. So it's actually really affordable. You can do HPV testing. There's other, other tests that, um, are offered by this company as well. And, um, including some blood testing and things like that. But the main thing is they, the, the, that, I guess that lab, that home testing, um, lab does, uh, sexually transmitted diseases and things like that, but it includes HPV. So you can do HPV testing for very reasonable price, just, uh, at home. And, and that's what I would end up recommending. Just take charge of it yourself since, um, you may not be able to rely on your doctor to do it. Don't forget to hit the like button. And if you find these videos useful, please share them.